Welcome, this is going to be the kind of like the part 2 of patch 1.022. If you've not checked out the video from yesterday, it is all about the heroes and the artifacts that have been in the game. My first impressions on them, how I want to, you know, talk about them. Are they good or are they bad? But today we're doing it the different one. We're doing all on the Shadow Fear Drake and the Brood Bear. Because they are out, we've caught them. And obviously we haven't been lucky on the Brood Bear, but we can check out the skills through the skill menu anyway so let's talk about the broom bear let's talk about the shadow phaedric are they good are they bad who's going to be using them and what you need to be looking out for for these two pets hello yes smash like comment, and subscribe for more daily videos with me mr sneaker and we're here again with another call of dragons video since we are an official call of dragons content creator flexing the frame like always two months in a row hopefully we can make it a third month in a row, but let's talk about pets today, right? We're on the Shadow Phaedric and the Brune Bear. Are they worth it, right? So we're going to discuss the Shadow Phaedric first. I'm going to showcase the skill and the other two skills that you can obtain. And then we're going to have to showcase the Brune Bear. Because even though I captured a epic Brune Bear, it wasn't really epic apart from having three skills and obviously having these skill slots. So, Shadow Phaedric, what does its skill do? pretty easy it's got shadow hunter it's very far so it is a magic based skill and you can see that as well by the damage type and what it does is it deals target damage to a legion but more importantly it inflicts captive and captive is when we scroll down you can see it's both based on intelligence but captive states the legion deals more damage to the target inflicted with captive the region is Two seconds so it's a really cool little effect here so pretty simple you can see this basically deal its damage and then afterwards we've got captive for two seconds for two seconds we might have that little bit of extra right so is this pet good because basically this pet has a mini if you want to call it infirm trigger right we're increasing the damage bonus it's only 1.28 percent at zero stars but obviously this is going to increase with our intelligence it's also going to increase as you can imagine when we start upgrading these star ratings right so if we're going up and we're trying to you know get the star ratings of these pets and get the one stars and the two stars you can imagine this is going to be a much better number is the pet good though well when we look at the other skills if we look at even them at the two stars or even just at one stars which most people might be buying now let's do two stars because this, this makes it a bit more reasonable right because most people will buy a couple of one stars but the two star skills are the ones that are going to do some damage boys right and you can get the free three star skill just remember that right so forceful shadow hunter this is basically increasing the damage dealt as you can imagine by 12.8 percent which is really good for our um, Shadow Phaedric. But the one that I actually want to talk about, and it's a spirit based trait, is Enduring Shadow Hunter, because this increases the amount of time by one second for every 100 points in spirit. And I think that is kind of crazy, because if you have a pet with over 300, 400 spirit, well, that is now a four second increase, meaning this pet is now allowing you to do six seconds of increased damage. And obviously this damage is going to be scaled because of the intelligence. So how would I build this pet? You probably would be asking. And it's kind of cool because you're going to be rocking mainly intelligence and spirit as you can imagine and if we go to the other one it's um intelligence too so we can go for those plus luck allowing us maybe to do some spicy stuff with our um pet but what we would always want to go for in my opinion when we're rocking the shadow hunter is going to be obviously its main skill we're going to want always always this spirit skill here which is increasing the duration magic spirit might be something that we want to take because we will be dealing war pet skill damage and once we dealt that war pet skill damage and we got that captive trigger we want to deal an extra 20 percent extra critical damage if we have that window so if we get the lines you know if the stars align and we get that war pet skill damage the captive trigger goes on and our next skill hits guess what we might be hitting with a 20% extra critical hit if we're lucky, right? So I really do like magic spirits when it comes into this. You could look into something like 
Magic Pulse, but I just think Magic Sprex is far superior here. And then if you're looking at other skills, to be honest, you can go for quite a lot of other things. It depends on what you personally look out for. You could go for stuff like Outburst of Rage. I know this is an agility-based skill, but I just think Outburst of Rage is honestly one of the best skills in the game. It's a passive skill no matter what. 10% chance to gain Rage. And at 3 stars that you can always buy if you go like in second place, you're gaining 27.89 rage. And that is, as you can see, it's already scaled up. But that is with only five agility boys. So imagine when you have this really high agility and a leveled up pet. You have some insane rage generation, right? So that shows a couple of things on that. What pairings would you basically cater to the Shadow Hunter? I would always, I'm not going to lie, equip this pet specifically to a couple of magic heroes obviously you can run this on any magic based commander that you want you know if you're going to run it even on these guys for a flying match you can definitely do that because i do think even though they're not in the, uh, he's not in the game but we'll talk about atheist and fear with the shadow Phaedric. i think he's really good because with that extra damage dealt bonus it does mean all the single target damage that you're trying to deal is amplified on top of obviously bertrand bertrand's gonna love this pet but one pe one person i think i don't i don't think you really want to maybe they're gonna try it out and i'm wrong but lilia the reason why I don't like it on Lilia is because Lilia has area of effect damage and her Scorch damage is also area of effect damage. But Captive is a single target increase, right? So we're not really getting as much benefit of it unless we basically go for more single target heroes in the game. But I'm not going to say it's going to be bad. I do think you can still rock it on these guys. I just think you might get more benefit out of that shadow of phaedric on single target heroes like atheist like uh, bertrand and even on toha i think it'd be a really good pet for toha too so that's basically the shadow phaedric nice and simple pet overview there my first impressions of it in this nice video we're going to do a full guide later for this pet don't worry i just wanted to get this out so you guys have a little bit of info while you're trying to capture them maybe in your arsenal right so now let's go on to the brood bear and this thing i actually love i kind of love this bear because this bear is very similar to the venomous lizard right so the thing is with the venomous lizard and the broom bear they basically fulfill the same role but in different criteria. and what i mean by that is the venomous lizard allows you to obviously deal in a nice amount of you know poison damage every second to super far away targets like the you know archers like the mages that might be targeting you if you're an infantry player on top of obviously the infantry players around you right so that's kind of the benefit of you get the range of it right but the brune bear here what its skill is is quickening and quickening is a very cool skill right i'm not gonna lie quickening allows you basically to do the same thing here i'm gonna have to move myself let me just do that um move this overlay get the camera back over here boys right so the quickening scale here as you can see um says you gain charged so gaining charged is each counter attack against an enemy legion inflicts one stack of barbed wire with a maximum of three stacks which will be increased which we'll talk about and then the next time the hero cast a rage skill they deal damage up to five surrounding enemies surrounding um carrying barbed mark and cleaning all stacks of those barbed marks from those enemies and it deals as you can see at the moment 5.8 damage times the amount of stacks so this is basically 15 damage at the moment which doesn't sound like that much but you gotta remember this is a strength based pet and it's all about counter attack damage and you're gonna get this off all the time meaning everyone is always going to be on maximum stats i'm just going to be honest however this skill only is good 
if you're around the targets, meaning the only pairings that you really want to use the brune bear is for, as you can imagine, is going to be the Skogel and Goresh combo. Don't get me wrong, you can use it on Madeline and Garwood. It's going to be fine on this if you just want some extra damage output with a super tank, you can do that. But Garwood, uh, for Goresh and Skogel, should I say, are going to love this pack. This is kind of everything that they do. They deal in this nice area of effect damage with this kind of cool counter-attack hit effect. Skogel always amplifies the amount of counter-attacks you're dealing. So you're loving it with this pairing. So you can tell <clears throat> that the Brune Bear is definitely made for these two, right? Is it going to be good for anyone else? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be that great apart from, like I said, maybe for Madeline and Garwood for that pairing, just so you've got it on your infantry heroes. I wouldn't use it for cavalry. I wouldn't use it for anything else. It's literally specifically made for that counter-attack build. And like I said, this ability is very close range. So what I see is Basically, do you want more damage through this Brune Bear at a closer range? Or do you want to use the Venomous Lizard to deal a little bit less damage, but you get to deal it at all ranges, which is the very powerful trait, right? And the cool thing is with the Brune Bear, yes, maybe you melt through the front line. And the cool thing is you might run into the enemy's mages and archers. And guess what? This thing might be going crazy and you might get some good value. But we don't know how good it's going to be until obviously I get to test this myself properly, right? This is again first impressions. But when we look at the skills, again, we can see why this is going to be a good pet because obviously we know how this works now on basically stacking on your opponents and then basically blowing up those stacks to do a bunch of damage. But when we go down and check out the other quickening traits, which I might have just gone past. There we go. Terrible quickening. This is going to allow us to increase the maximum amount of stacks by one with the amount of agility we have on our pet, which is great. And then we also have up at the top, if it comes up, forceful quickening, which is increasing the damage dealt. So what we can do with this pet, which I think is the build, honestly, is straight away you have quickening for strength. You have obviously your terrible for agility and you have your um, forceful for endurance. So you have your three main traits already in that. And what we'll be doing is getting tough Counter-Strike and maybe Counter-Strike and just rock up on these two skills to finish the endurance side. And then what we can do is do some cool stuff, right? We could go into um, our agility and if you wanted to do chain strikes, you're dealing maybe a physical attack and damage trigger which allows your talents to trigger again, you could do that. And if you didn't want to choose Chain Strike, you could go even harder. And as you can imagine, you can go Counter Strike, right? Um, so it, it, it's, it's so good on how much you can do with this pet, honestly. You, as long as you build it for Counter Attack damage and Counter Strike damage and just being able to trigger talents either through Counter Strike or chain strike as the both physical based um things maybe you get restricted you know on what skills you're going to be using and that's why you're going to have to shift over to why, why i'm suggesting that but it's going to be a great pet boys i'm i'm looking forward to using it with like i said my um goresh garwood mainly i'm going to see um Gow goresh garwood goresh Skogel. See how well it does there. I'm probably going to get, like I said, the, the whole combo on it first. And then I'm going to be able to value it. Okay, I can get these spells on it. And then, you know, give you guys a full guide. Because again, this is only day one. This is my first impressions on both of the pets. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far on the Shadow Phaedric and the Brune Bear. I think the Brune Bear is actually really good. Um, surprisingly, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people on how good this is in the long term. Um, Shadow of Adric is alright, I think it's going to be good mainly on like Bertrand, Toha, Atheist, basically anyone um, with single target damage, I think that's what it's really good for, but we'll soon find out if it's still okay to use on like Lilia and your Valens and your Wild Deers, we'll soon see um, when we get into testing of it, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Those are my first impressions of those two pets in the brand new patch of uh, 1.022.
I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a little bit of information on how these guys work. And if you're wondering if you should capture them or not. And maybe I'm giving you a little bit of that, you know, hindsight. So now you're like, okay, and maybe I don't need the brown bear because guess what? I'm not running Goresh Skogil, so it's not on my priority. But maybe I want the Shadow Phaedric, right? So I hope I've answered those questions. I've given you all the information on the skills, on kind of what you want to go for, and obviously what pairings they are working with. So with all of that, hit the subscribe button. You know what to do. Hit the like, hit the sub, know what to do, and join the Sneaky Army with eight, over 5,000 subs, and we are an official Call of Dragons content creator, guys. And until the next video, you know what? Stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out, guys.